So the name of uh, our webinar today is how to model precast elements and complete documentation much faster in Revit by using our tools which are uh, written here. Uh, my name is Valens Belisarichus, I'm a structural engineer and I work as a BIM application engineer in AJCAD. Um, our company is operating since 1988 and it's a professional developer of BIM software and we have more than 8,000 new Revit users in more than 100 countries. So uh, our mission is to reduce BIM stress so we can make it easier and eliminate task, tasks that do not create value. And in this web webinar you'll learn how to accelerate uh, modeling of concrete structures by using um, insert elements to quickly insert con connections into your project, uh, the smart floor to create uh, holocaust labs, um, sort mark tool to renumber precast elements, and smart assemblies to prepare sharp drawings of your precast elements. And in the end I will show you the new, the upcoming uh, product, uh, smart details. Okay, so shortly about each of the uh, elements, each of the uh, solutions, it's, uh, insert elements. As a solution then we, you create uh, rules if, and you insert a lot of elements according to these rules to uh, the selected elements. So it, it solves uh, your insertion of different uh, connection details. Okay, Smart Assemblies is a tool to generate uh, assemblies drawings. Uh, we'll try to do something like this with all the dimensions and we'll place used on the sheet and we'll create another assembly so automatically uh, with the schedules and views placed on the sheet. Um, smart floors tool, we will try to uh, create floors, holocaust labs uh, with the help of this tool and it will look like this and sort mark tool uh, helps us to remember selected elements according to different rules as you can see here and just with a one click you can remember all of your elements with uh, the saved rules which you can use from one project to another project. And the last tool is uh, Smart Details so it's improvement or uh, separate tool to insert uh, connection details with more uh, with more rules and possibilities than insert elements. Okay and we will start now live demo by uh, first of all I will use insert elements tool so uh, you will learn how to insert in different connections that adopts to the dimensions of your project elements. Okay, so I will switch to Revit window. You should see my Revit window now. If that's what you see, we can proceed now. Okay, so mm -hmm, I will go to the tools for BIM doc. I will find my tool, insert elements here. And I will use insert elements by related objects command for the beginning and we will go on step by step. So first of all I will insert few foundations here. I will select let's say these columns. I will insert elements by related objects and I will select the foundations from my just regular families of foundations. and. Now I add it here and I select the rule to place uh, related to the column base point and I enter the elevation value and I just click on insert elements. And you can see that these foundations are under the, under the columns. 
and if I will just do the same for the other columns we can select the different family for this so we will have our foundations here so I will choose another foundation and I will do the same okay so you can insert foundations and um, quickly by selecting the place where you want them to be and by defining the rules the elevations and so on um, now we will proceed to connections so I will select now uh, structural framing elements here I will filter just uh, girder type framing so I have selected these beams and now I will insert connection details to the end of these beams so I will go to insert elements I will select from structural connections category and here I have this connection phase based family created so I will add it here and I will define the rule that uh, elements will be placed on the started end faces of the beams um, so yeah it's okay for me so I will just proceed okay so we have these elements inserted and we have these elements at the end of each beam we have in our project in beams we selected uh, now I will do the same for the columns so I will select columns here I will filter them again yeah okay now I will insert um, let's say the structural connections and the shoes at the bottom of the column I will choose to insert at the bottom of face of the column this family so I will insert it and I would like to notice now that this family is just a one family here but um, this column is 400 by 400 and this column is 600 by 400 but with one click I just inserted this family to this column and to this column in it and these elements are uh, at the corners of each of the columns even if the uh, dimensions of the columns are different and this happens because uh, when we create the family uh, we define the distance between the balls or reference planes and the name of a per parameter we give the same name as a column family has this H parameter so then we insert this element into our project into our column uh, it takes uh, H value uh, from the column family so uh, let's say now I I will switch back to my projects and you can see now that in this family we have already H value as 600 even in in family it was 400 because it took the value from the from the column uh, family from this point so we can uh, create our families according to this and 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 the elements adapts to the uh, to the dimensions of our elements so this is very good and we have different elements you can insert the same family and don't worry that it will be not in the right place okay so let's continue now I will select structure columns again and we will insert more details okay I will go here and I will select structural connections and let's insert some um, bolts on the top face of a column okay 
and and then let's insert some connection details uh, to the place we have a beam and column uh, point connection connection point exists so if I will hit that we will see that additional details inserted in the place where structural framing intersects with our column so we can see this one is at the level where the beam is so we have connection here and then you have these balls again they have the same uh, distances um, as this need to be for this kind of a column and for this kind of a column okay um, so we can do it like this so we can let's just go further and insert another details another options just to see the possibilities and, and, and to think about how to model our, our connections in the future so I will select let's say these beams I will click on insert elements again and I will found another family I have created just a vertical hole with predefined dimensions I will insert at the end these holes okay I would like to okay we can not we can just do this uh, by not closing the window we can continue by for the insertion of other elements so I will select this hole and I will select to insert it uh, we have a connection with other framing elements exist so now I select that uh, to insert this family at the place where the uh, these uh, holocaust slab framing elements intersects with my uh, beam okay so I will just insert it okay and you can see now that we have this family um, here at the gaps of um, uh, holocaust labs here are just the framing holocaust labs so mm, okay so we have here holes we have here holes we can insert connection balls let's say I will select this column and I will select this column at once and then again I will insert elements and I will use um, okay corbel corbel family corbel ankle anchor and again uh, at the points where beam intersects with a column so okay and we can see now that we have this bolt inserted um, and it adapts to the to the distance of, of the corbels and so on and you can see that this column has corbels to the different sizes and we have anyway these balls at the right place and one more connection example okay I will select let's say these three beams insert elements by related objects I'll select connections again and let's go and select the, um, this one and select to beat um, okay without intersection we don't need these options we will just define the start and offset and the layout value okay so we'll just insert this okay and you can see now that we have these cuts inserted maybe it's better to see this in, in this window so you can see now your framing holocaust lab has all these openings 
inserted and the last maybe example with the insert elements which we can see that this is wide uh, precast double T and this is narrow framing element we will just select these families and we'll try to insert some elements here and you can see again the example of how the families adapts to the um, to the dimensions of, of our elements so I would just insert it and you can see that for this beam we have um, this distance of 1600 and for the bigger one we have uh, 2390 so it takes this value from the from the framing uh, family okay um, yeah so that's I hope you get the idea the possibilities of the insert elements and um, we will just go to the other tool now to the smart floors uh, yeah and we will create group of Holocaust labs by defined uh, boundaries okay mm -hmm. uh, you can see now here in in this project I already have uh, some floors created here so uh, this tool creates floors and insert uh, voids in it so we have here uh, not the framing category elements but floor uh, category elements so the tool, the tool creates floors and insert holes in it generic models okay uh, I will go now to the last level where we don't have these mm, flaws so I will try to demonstrate this I will switch to smart flaws tool now and I will select insert update flaws okay we have this configuration window where we must give the name of a group then we start we select the start support we select the end support uh, layout beginning so it might be grids reference planes uh, beams walls and so on and if we we will add uh, some offsets to lay on lay our floors on the seats of, of, of our framing elements here we have to define uh, the parameter name for the length and for the width so uh, yeah I can create my new shared parameter or I, I have created parameters before and yeah now we can uh, select the floor type so it's, it's just a floor type with a, uh, one layer of 265 millimeters and I will select to insert holes so whole profiles are generic uh, model families which uh, we have in this tool or you can modify these families and use the type of uh, holes uh, that you use in your country and here I select the type of a floor which should be used for the cast in place floor type because uh, when we have this distance between our supports and we have 20 elements of 1200 millimeters width so we still have uh, 500 millimeters left and the tool will insert cast in place element in, in this place um, so we just select what type and where it should be placed in the beginning in the middle or in the end so yeah it will place these floors on the level 5 and the offset will be like this so I will just click OK insert and we have our floors here so the reason why we select supports 
is that boundaries of our flaws are uh, connected to the to these elements and if we will move them we could update this group of floors uh, according to the changes uh, to the place of our all of these boundaries so I select as a boundary the grid and the other beams and I again select the type of the elements I want to create and okay just click OK and even if this is floor category you can see that these parameters are written according to the length of this floor element so we have the length and the width and we can use this in, in our schedule tables okay let's insert a bit um, let's say we will rename it we will uh, select supports and the layout and this time reference plane and these options again okay and we'll just um, insert it okay so yeah but uh, I see that I they didn't enter the offset so I can select my group and I can edit this group I will add offset values and I'll hit update and you can see that my um, flaws have been updated okay so you can just uh, go like this and uh, finish your whole floor okay start support and support now I will select the wall layout beginning uh, let's select this reference layout and the beam and yeah let's say it will be like this select the same um, slabs of this and we'll just insert it okay so if we will insert uh, and we have this massive slab without holes we can do it uh, by inserting holes separately by selecting this element and by choosing the holes type so I will do this and holes are inserted and now we will have here also a uh, slab with a with holes so yeah that's, that's like this uh, so in this case I just uh, used the same uh, whole family but you can use uh, modified with a defined width and so on okay so we create uh, our floors and we can see in uh, schedule tables that we can just uh, complete it with uh, name, width, length and concrete and uh, volume parameters if needed and the count and so on. Okay, so uh, that's it with the uh, smart floors. I will uh, use another tool now. I will use sort mark to renumber different elements by defined rules uh, just in, in, in few clicks I will start from from the floors like we have uh, created them so I will go to sort mark tool and we have here options uh, of grid numbering room numbering space numbering and element numbering so I will choose this one to renumber elements and if you have any questions you can write to to the questions bar so I will try to answer them uh, after webinar okay
uh, the sort mark. Now I will select the category which I want to renumber. So for this I will select floors. I will select where I want to write uh, number values. So I will write this to the mark uh, property. And now I have here configuration saved already. So I don't need to uh, do the same again, add numbering rules, grouping rules, uh, sorting uh, by which uh, parameters what will be sorted and so on. And I just have my configuration from the previous project. I can overlook it if it's the same in this project and I will just click OK. And I have 200 50 or almost elements renumbered. I can, yeah, we have the same mark values, of course. Um, yeah, let's try to go to, let's say, to the four slab. I will try to insert some tags here. Okay. Let's do this. So we'll insert mark values. So you can see now this floor has 4.6, 4.6 and now we have different lengths. So of course we have different mark values and so on. So we have this rule to, to include a level number like this is the fourth floor. So we have different uh, mark value and so on. So um, it depends on your rules because you saw a lot of um, possibilities, a lot of parameters by which you can uh, define your numbering rules. So let's say I will select structure columns, I will write mark values and again I have here configuration of grouping, numbering, sum numbering, sorting according to different um, instance or type parameters. Then we have here yeah, parameters like material and model behavior or structural usage. So we can assign just these things and um, define again the rules and OK and click OK. And we have all the columns renumbered. Again, some duplicate values if we want to. Uh, let's say we can add again annotations to the structural columns and use mark values and leader maybe. Okay, so you can see now that we have uh, this column and this column the same uh, because we have the same geometry but of course we can change the rules like if I will select the uh, structural columns again to the mark values and um, let's say I will include column location mark here and I will click OK. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, we have some changes here, but uh, yeah, you can see now that we don't, even with the column geometry is the same, we can have different mark values and so on. So there are a lot of rules which you can use uh, in different situations. Uh, OK, uh, let's do the same for the framing elements because I will need that to use my smart assemblies later. Okay, framing and again mark and again I have already rules defined what to include, how to sort and what values should be written. Okay, so uh, that's how sort mark tool works so you don't need to use uh, schedule tables and try to renumber all your elements you need. Now you can see everything is renumbered according to the lengths and so on. So yeah, let's go back to 3D view 
and let's switch to the uh, now next tool, the smart assemblies, and we will see how to create automatic assemblies, how to create views, rule-based dimensions, and assembly sheets. So let's go and try to use smart assemblies. Okay, I will find it here, smart assemblies. Uh, you can see here a lot of tools, but I just uh, talked today about a few of them. So, yeah, let's get back to smart assemblies. So, smart assemblies uh, creates assembly from the selected ele elements, and it adds um, dimensions and so on. So, when I select the element, I will select the column, and I hit the create assembly. Okay, I have this window where it says uh, what configurations I would like to use and I have here information about what categories can be used for smart assemblies like walls, parts, floors, uh, columns, generic models uh, with different shapes and so on, foundations and so on. Uh, and we have to, and we need to have uh, mark values. And the smart assembly will take this column and the all the elements which uh, are hosted to, to, to this column. So it automatically will include my connection details, my balls, so you don't need to add them manually. Okay, uh, and how it will work? We have here configuration. I can edit it. And now you can see that. We can select the views which will be created for this particular column or just like according to this shop drawing configuration and the views will be created for each view we can assign the view template so it means like the visibility settings the scale the transparency and so on all the settings are here in view templates and we can and then we define the dimension rule so it means um, what will be shown, uh, what nodes will be added, what dimensions will be added in, in this configuration. And this configuration we can edit here, edit dimension rules. So I will go to the columns here and we can define as many uh, dimension rules as we want. So this is for the columns and we have here uh, configurations for main element geometry and we have configuration for hosted metal for hosted concrete details uh, rebars um, dimension uh, we can set up for which elements will be dimensioned or will not be dimensioned at, at all and the node positioning and so on so Let's see this uh, in, in main, main element geometry. We can uh, select the styles. We can select the, um, how it will be placed, the location, or it should be included or not included, uh, joined with uh, non-standard cuts and standard cuts, and we can select uh, what is the size of opening should be dimensioned or it should not be dimensioned and how and then dimensions will be uh, grouped or not grouped so you can see all these meanings in, in the updated pictures and yeah you can see now that we can uh, select also different uh, dimension rules for metal details for concrete details for rebars uh, rebar sets area reinforcement and so on and what to show not to show and yeah on which side nodes should be uh, placed and so on so after we do this we assign the dimension rule to each of the view uh, we go to the schedules we uh, select which schedules could be will be used as a template so we select the schedule template from the standard Trevit sh schedules and quantities so we don't need to format manually them in all the assemblies 
or copy it or whatever we can just assign here and don't need to bother later and on the sheets tab we can see that we have sheet template we cannot select anything as long as we don't have any sheet created yet so okay I will let's see how it works so I will hit create configurations can be uh, sold after you try this product okay let's go down and see we'll find this uh, column over here and we can take a look now we have this column view with defined view template so we have some uh, visibility settings here and we have dimensions for the our elements we can see and find uh, with dimensions and you can also see that we have gravity point inserted in, in all the elements in all the smart assemblies uh, it's calculated according to the weight of the materials of the elements so you have to assign materials the physical properties to the elements so you will have this gravity point and you can use it for the defining of lifting places especially for the wall panels okay so we can see these views we can have uh, we have a concrete schedule we have part list and we can place everything or just what we need on our sheet so I will drag this view I will drag this view okay section Okay, a bit down and we will add some schedule tables schedule okay over here and now if I will go back to 3d view and I will go back to configuration to shop drawing configuration so we will find that in, under the sheets we can choose the sheet template already because we have this sheet created and if I will save this I will do this uh, I will create two new assemblies and we will see the result so I will select this element so I will click on create assemblies and yeah we choose the same configurations and click on create and now the solution will insert uh, create these two assemblies and it will place all the views to the sheet so you don't need to place your views manually it will place the the same views as it is in in this sheet template and it to the same place as in this sheet okay so two, assembly, two new assemblies created we can go just to the sheets straight to the sheet and we will see that these views are inserted we have also schedule tables here and yeah for the different column different dimensions but the views are the same and we have them aligned in the same place and we don't need to drag them manually so uh, that's how basically uh, assembly works we have of course update assembly edit configuration change configurations and disassemble functions uh, but I would like to show you uh, just possibilities and we'll go through the few of the other elements and we'll try to create assembly so let's just pick this one this beam um, and click create assemblies okay and the beam and create okay let's see the result 
have here beam. Now we have this uh, dimensions of our openings uh, over here in the front view, in the top view. Uh, we have schedules and we can place again everything to the sheet and use it as a template for the other beams. But let's just skip that and, and try to uh, see other possibilities. So I will select this one. Uh, I will create assembly again and I will, I will select um, where is it? Okay, so I will select now uh, this configuration. Uh, it's a bit different from the beam. Okay, let's wait some information about the materials of my hole. Okay, and we can see now that uh, we have this our element with some view, total dimensions and dimensions for the holes. Okay. Um, let's go and do something with reinforcement. So I will switch to 3D view where I can see it. Okay, so these elements have reinforcement. I will select this element, this beam and create assembly. Mm -hmm. So, it, and again I have configurations a bit different with more views and yeah, you can see here we have our reinforcement views, we have some different templates, we have dimension rules, different. Uh, yeah, let's create it. It will take more time because of more views. But anyway, it's it will contain the dimensions and the views will be the views template and so on. Mm -hmm. more seconds and we will have uh, beam with reinforcement views and so on. Let's see this one. Okay, so this is our beam with um, with uh, hosted details. So we have the names and the distance. We have uh, dimensions along these. Uh, different hosted details. Uh, we have front view for reinforcement here. So let's take a look. Okay, we have here in reinforcement with uh, reinforcement and distances to the to the ends of the formwork of the beam, and actually we have uh, connection details not turned off in, in this template, but you can do it as you like, just modify the template. Okay, uh, let's go to the front view, yes, this is the phone rock. Then we have a section view, we have uh, other dimensions of reinforcement. So you just uh, create them and overlook the result like we have here the, mm, all our reinforcement with the mass included and just uh, overlook the drawing if everything is fine uh, and it's speedy quick let's save this um, yeah, let's create 
another one let's create via column with reinforcement we have it here so we can just see the possibilities let's create this one and how can you use this if you would would try okay okay columns with reinforcement and um, Okay, let's see the column with reinforcement. So, I don't know if you work with these precast elements in the details, but I have done some projects without any add-ons. So, it's a pity I didn't have these. Okay, so, yeah, we can see again we have column, we have reinforcement schedules and so on. So we can uh, choose to place these views to one sheet or to the two sheets and use it as a template. Let's do the last maybe assembly. It will be a bit different. So it will be the part of a wall. So I'll select the, the part and I will create assembly from the part. So it will be not just a simple um, column or beam. It will be a bit different configuration element. So we will see how it works on that. Actually, you can create any type of uh, phase-based command and insert, uh, not the command, but family and insert it in, into your element and then you can add model lines to your um, phase-based family so you can dimension just to the place where, where you need so it gives a wide range of, of usage of this tool. Okay, so it will generate maybe the biggest bunch of uh, drawings here. Okay, let's see. And again, you see this this element has also the gravity point, even it's um, it's it's kind of has a complex uh, form. So let's do it. Let's see the drawings. Let's go to this uh, element and yeah, let's see the dimensions of uh, area reinforcement here. We can uh, see the uh, side view, the front view with dimensions and uh, corbels, arrays and cuts, dimensions we need or we don't need so we can modify something. So just add something and, and so we can uh, create quickly all of our drawings so we have again some schedules and we can place everything to the sheet. Uh, okay, so that's what I wanted to show you about smart assemblies. And the last upcoming tool, the smart details, uh, uh, you can see how to insert elements on surfaces by defined rules. 
So we will switch to the other project here and it's still under the development but you will see that uh, I will select configurations here and we have here different configurations how to insert elements you can see uh, the rules again how it will be inserted where it will be inserted on the side surfaces on the end faces on the top faces or bottom faces and we again select uh, the element we want to insert then again we have uh, dimensions of it we have start end of set the layout rules and so on we have these pictures uh, which shows us how to work with it okay so uh, I will try to insert something here okay I will have some rules here like to insert just a few uh, elements on each of the side each of the surface let's do it with this configuration now you can see that I selected to insert uh, voids and then insert uh, plates so you can uh, use that for the connection of course then you have uh, these voids and, and uh, plates inside okay and let's do another one let's use this one so you can see that again different configurations different distances and again again different uh, family over here and uh, yeah you can do this for the um, all the elements that has surfaces and now we have point based uh, elements uh, point based rules but we will include uh, line based rules and it will of course increase the uh, possibilities of this tool so you can check later our site for the information about this tool and of course I've been talking about few tools and we have a lot of tools uh, different tools for different purposes uh, you can check them out on our website um, and how can you do this you can just use our tools for BIM doc as you see in, uh, on my Revit screen you need to install this tool and you can try all of our tools for 40 day so you can install just one tool try it out and then install another tool you just go to our site find this one tools for BIM doc and you'll be able to um, try out products so we actively support progress of BIM industry and yeah we, we try to create the market which uh, suits for all and all of our engineers needs and thank you for attention